The F-2 is not an improved version of the F-1. Although I consider them both to be body pack field recorders, the F-1 is more versatile for me. I use the F-1 to record audio to my video cameras that accept 3.5mm plugs. The F-1 delivers better audio to the video than the camera's internal microphone, a low bar to be sure. The F-1 has a proprietary mic connector on top that lets me attach zoom, shotgun, and stereo mics. I can put the F-1 in the shoe on top of the camera with a shotgun mic and record an interview with a person in front of the camera. I can attach a zoom stereo mic set to the F-1 and use it as a standalone field recorder for audio, although mic handling noise is a problem. And with a lavalier mic plugged into the mic jack, I can attach the F-1 to an interviewee and record good audio without any handling noise no matter how far the person is from me. The F-1 has a lot of settings and it requires that audio levels be set from the recorder to match the volume of the incoming sound so that there's adequate gain and no clipping. If I have an F-1 attached to my camera, I can match the output of the F-1 to the audio input of the camera and have properly set audio recorded to the video on the camera. I will also have a separate audio file recorded directly to the F1 on its micro SD card. The F1 can be set to record to mono or stereo files. The input socket on the F1 is labeled mic slash line in. So I sent Zoom, a, Zoom support an email asking if that meant it accepts line level input and the answer was yes. Because of this versatility, my opinion is that I get more for my money from the F1 than from the F2, although I have to buy Zoom's proprietary microphones as an extra expense. The F2 is a very bare-bones recorder. It records only to a mic connected to the 3.5 millimeter input plug, but I have a secret for you. If you connect a cord with 3.5 millimeter connectors on both ends, one end to the headphone output on the F2 and the other to end to your camera's audio input, you can record directly to your camera using the F2 with a lav mic, but it's clumsy. The F2 just hangs there. It can't be connected to the camera like the F1 can. An aggravation with the F2 is that it can't be controlled from the recorder as the F1 can. You can stop and start recording, lock the recorder, playback a recording to headphones connected to the F2, stop playback, and that's about it. You can adjust the volumes to the headphones, but there's no way to adjust recording levels because there's no need to. If you have the Bluetooth version of the F2, which I recommend, you can see how much predicted recording time to the card you have, how much battery life is predicted to remain, and have some control over the recorder functions toggling the low cut filter, setting the recording format, 48K, 32-bit, for example, set the recording file name, insert file notes, adjust the headphone volume, start, stop, lock recording, playback the recording, although you can't hear it on the phone. You have to use headphones connected to the F2 to hear playback. And you can manage files and settings. You can't format a micro SD card from the phone. You cannot format a micro SD card from the recorder. You must be connected to a computer and running the desktop software to format a card. This is another aggravation if you've run out of space and you want to format in the field. You have to have a computer with you. On the F1, all those functions and more can be accessed in the field on the recorder itself using the LCD screen. There's no smartphone app, there's no desktop application for the F1. One advantage offered by using the smartphone app with the F2 is that when you control the F2 from the phone, the buttons on the F2 won't work. The person wearing the F2 can't stop recording even if they try. Only the smartphone app can start and stop recording. The F2 is locked as far as the recorder itself is concerned. They can, however, turn the unit off, and that will be reflected in the loss of communication with your phone. You'll be able to see it. 
and although you can't monitor the actual audio remotely, you can see the record levels jumping up and down on your phone, so you can have some assurance that you're actually recording. With the F1, if you can't see the LCD screen and the red recording light, you can't monitor the recording from a distance. The F1 maximum SD card is 32 gigs. Zoom recommends class 4 or higher. The F2 maximum card size is 512 gigs, and Zoom recommends class 4 or higher. Zoom says the F2 records around 750 hours of audio to a 512 gig card, and up to 48 hours for 32 gig cards. So save money by buying cards based on your needs. I have a 32 gig card freshly formatted in my F1, and it says on the screen that I can record 30 hours with a lavalier mic connected. It's less if I'm using a stereo mic. With my F2 connected via Bluetooth to my phone, I'm told that I'll have 46 hours of recording to a 32 gig card. And that's a surprise because I have it set to 48K 32 bit, while the F1 says 30 hours with 48K 24 bit. The F1 has a handling noise problem if you have the proprietary mics connected to it as you hear here. I'm using this setup to um, demonstrate the handling noise. I live in a noisy area so I assume you will be picking up a lot of the noise from the background. But what I want to demonstrate is the handling noise on the unit. Neither the F1 nor the F2 have handling noise with a lav attached, as you can hear here. I'm holding the lav mic where you can see it, and I'm speaking and recording directly to the camera without recording to the F1. And I want to demonstrate the difference between handling with a lav mic plugged in and handling the line while I'm holding the lab mic. This makes the F1 completely usable as a body pack because it doesn't have any handling noise when you're using it with a lab mic attached. As you can see I'm holding the lab mic and talking into it. My F2 has the lab mic screwed in to the mic input and on the output socket, I've got a cord running from the headphone jack directly to the in audio in on the camera. So I'm recording to the camera without actually having the uh, F2 recording. If I had the F2 recording, I'd get a recording to this video as well as to the card on the F2. So maybe you can see the word output on there, or maybe not. But as you can see from my handling, there's no n microphone handling noise when I have a lav plugged into the F2. Both recorders have flimsy doors. I broke a battery door on the F1, and as you can see, the door has metal contacts which connect the batteries. If you can't fix it, there's no recovery. The batter, the recorder won't have power and it won't work. I emailed Zoom support telling them I'd broken the door and they mailed me a replacement with four pages of instructions on how to put the replacement door together and connect it to the recorder. I didn't do it right, but it works. I won't use that recorder as a body pack because I can't guarantee it's connected but I will use it on cameras where I can see from the camera's monitor that I'm getting sound on the video. The F2's doors are not electrical, so when I break one of them off, I'll put gaff tape over the hole and be fine. I sent Zoom support an email and asked if I can recharge batteries in either device, and the answer is no. I have to use a separate charger for rechargeable batteries. I asked if that could be added as a future feature 
and support says they passed my suggestion on to the engineers. The F2's claim to fame is that you can't clip the audio because the 32-bit floating point software recovers everything. That's true, but it's not. If you're using a 3.5mm mic that connects to the recorder, you'll be fine. I note on Wikipedia's website that a common line level input is plus 4 dBU. The manual for the F2 says its maximum input is minus 5.5 dBU. So if you're at a wedding and the DJ controls the microphones the guests are using for toasts and whatever, and you want to connect to the sound console and record off that instead of off the loudspeakers in the room, if the console's output is line level, you'll definitely clip if you connect it directly to the F2 and it won't be recoverable. If you really, really need to record off a mixing console or whatever, you'll need an attenuator between the console and your F2. I expect the line level outputs on the console to be quarter inch or XLR, so you may need a converter too. When the F2 came out and touted its lack of need for setting levels, I scoffed. My recording is on location, and I've never had a problem setting levels on the F1 and I get good audio. I sync it with the scratch audio on the video, but I got an F1 and I'm hooked. My workflow on the F1 is to bring a web, web belt that's maybe three feet long. I run it through the loops on the F1 and then hand it to the interview and let them put it on, hopefully under a loose shirt so that it doesn't show. They then run the mic from their collar under the garment to the F1 where I connect it. I then have them talk as I set the level on the LCD screen. When we're ready, I push record, lock the recorder, and we're off. I have no way of monitoring whether it's recording if the F1 is under a shirt or jacket, which is where I expect it to be. My interviews are with people talking, and there's no widespread between voice volumes in conversation. Clipping has never been a problem for me. Put the F1 on the belt upside down, by the way, so that the mic connection is on top. When, with the F2, I use the same belt, clip, it on, clip the mic on the collar, put the belt on, run the wire inside a garment, and attach it to the F2. I clip the recorder to the belt right side up so the mic connection is on top, start recording, and we're off. The F2 has a lock switch on the recorder, or I can record from my phone and monitor whether the F2 thinks it's picking up audio. I have to say, not setting the level is a time saver, and watching the audio on the phone is comforting. I don't have a problem with syncing audio from my field recorders to my video. Takes aren't long enough for the sync to drift, so I don't use time codes. If you use time codes, you can use an F2, but it has to have Bluetooth to connect to whatever it is you use for generating time. I bought two F2s and I got Bluetooth on both of them because of the convenience and comfort of having the recorders connected to smartphones for controlling and monitoring the recorders on location. So far my old phones will run the F2 smartphone apps, so I use old phones that aren't currently updated on Android and which are not ever going to be updated. I'm still using the F1s because they offer on-belt recording, which I can completely control in the field, plus on-camera recording when I need that feature. Now, I'm being a little mean to you because I'm not using either the F1 or the F2 to record audio. I'm using Pico gear. You can see my Pico lavalier mic somewhere on my shirt and it's transmitting to the Pico stream receiver which is plugged directly into the camera. The Pico gear doesn't record, it's only the transmitter and the receiver on my, on my tripod plugged into the camera so I'm recording directly to the video on the phone, I hope.